Let us sit back and enjoy Donna's photos of Antarctica, the Falkland Islands, and South Georgia. Great. Can I, I hope everyone can hear me. Yes. Um, and thanks, Poe. Um, so this was my second time to this part of the world. The first time I just went to the Antarctic Peninsula, but uh, I felt I hadn't seen enough penguins, so I had to go back in 2010 for this uh, wonderful trip. So um, it was almost uh, four weeks, um, and it was definitely worth every day. So, so this is just uh, by way of orientation. Here's Antarctica. Um, and here you can see the tip of Argentina with the small city Ushuaia. And you can see that it's really the closest uh, point of land really to um, the Antarctic Peninsula. So most um, uh, expeditions to Antarctica start in Ushuaia. Uh, on this particular trip, we also went to the Falkland Islands and South Georgia, as well as a stop on the South Orkneys and spent uh, quite a bit of time on the um, uh, peninsula here. So this is the actual route. Um, we started in Ushuaia. Uh, many of us came a couple of days early and spent uh, a couple of days in Tierra del Fuego before getting on the boat for our 25 day trip to uh, the Falkland Islands. Took us a day to get to the Falklands. Spent three days here, then two and a half days um, on the boat to get to South Georgia. Six days here, then uh, a day to the South Orkneys for a stop, another day back to the peninsula, and then eight days traveling up and down the peninsula before going back across the Drake Passage to Ushuaia. So although um, the land in Antarctica is very barren, the Southern Ocean is actually very rich in um, life. And um, we saw a lot of whales, many of whom are baleen whales. Um, and the, most of the animals, including the big whales, are in the Southern Ocean because of very small marine creatures like these krill that are crustaceans, typically less than three sonom six centimeters in length. So even these huge whales um, find enough of these krill to eat. Um, so very rich waters, even though the land is poor in life. So this is um, Ushuaia. Um, these are the Andes Mountains uh, behind it. This uh, is a small city in Argentina that is really quite uh, dependent uh, for, on the tourism that comes from these uh, Antarctic uh, voyages that leave from here. Um, this is just a street scene from Ushuaia. So we were here in the um, late spring, early summer, and there were lots of uh, flowers in, um, in the southern hemisphere at this time of year. And uh, because we, some of us had arrived a couple of days early, we were able to take a, um, a bus trip out to a sheep uh, ranch um, and uh, look at the scenery on our way out there. So here we have um, the Andes Mountains and the Southern Beach Forest um, on our way to visit this uh, sheep ranch. More Andes, more beach. And this is just one of the fjords that we uh, rode past. So we did see uh, one of the, these guanacos are very, uh, uh, common in southern Chile and Argentina, but we only saw the one. We weren't really expecting to see any in the area that we were at, but this is the one guanaco that we did see. And here's the outbuildings at this uh, sheep ranch. Um, 
lots of flowers around the uh, ranch. It was, and here are the sheep with the sheep dogs herding them into uh, the, the uh, corral. And this is one of our hosts. Uh, he was the member of the family that spoke the best English, so he was our guide. And he selected um, this sheep to be sheared for our entertainment. There he is getting his hair cut. So we um, had a barbecue lunch at this um, sheep ranch and then went back to Ushuaia. And the next morning we uh, visited the Tierra del Fuego um, park and saw a lot of birds actually. So this is a, mag a male Magellanic woodpecker. And there's the female, which I think is actually prettier than the male in this case. Lots of flowers in the park. Now these austral parakeets there, I guess about the size of a robin. They're not very big, but uh, tough little parrots to live at that part of the world. A um, black-chested uh, black buzzard eagle. And these southern crested caracaras are carrion eaters and they're really quite common in uh, southern South America. So the uh, lots of waterfowls. These are a pair of crested ducks. And these are the uh, upland geese and the, the male with the white head. And I better look at the female with the buffy colored head. So in the afternoon, we were back at Ushuaia and uh, getting ready to get on the um, cruise ship to um, start our trip um, to the Falkland Islands. And this is the group. So the uh, there were 95 um, tourists, 14 um, staff members. Uh, so these are the uh, members of the, um, uh, these are the leaders of the trip that um, organized the itinerary and adjusted it as needed, gave the lectures, drove the zodiacs, um, and were generally very provided, were the educators on the trip. The um, uh, officers on the ship were Polish. And the most of the crew, the 35 member crew were Filipino. This is uh, the stateroom. So there, oh, these used to be, this used to be a research vessel. So it's not luxurious accommodation, but it was quite adequate. We, you know, we had our own washroom and a porthole so that we could look out and see what the weather was like. And if there was anything interesting to go up and look at. So now we're, um, we've set sail and we're sailing down the Beagle Channel and the mountains you can see in the background here, this is part of the Andes, but it's Darwin's Range. And we're gonna take a day to get to the Falkland Islands. Uh, this is just a map of our route. So these two big islands, this is where most of the people live and we did not visit these because we were basically interested in the wildlife. So we, we were here for three days. The first day we visited New Island, the second day West Point Island and Carcass Island, and the third day Steeple Jason. And then we sailed away to South Georgia. So here's our ship, the Polar Star, which is at anchor um, while we go ashore at um, New Island. And so we are here to see um, primarily rockhopper penguins. So these little guys uh, are all rockhoppers um, nesting on this cliffside. And you can see some of them here in the, 
in the ocean and landing on the rock here and then scrambling up and um, walking up the cliff to their nesting sites. So like all penguins, they spend more than 80% of their life in the ocean and they just come ashore to nest. So here they are, little guys. So the rock hoppers, these were the smallest penguins that we saw on this trip. They are on average about 50 centimeters tall. Um, but what they lack in size, they make up for in feistiness. They um, are a very noisy bunch always jockeying for position and making their wishes known. And uh, like most of the wildlife we saw, they're not really afraid of people. So even though we were supposed to stay a meter away from the penguins, they would walk right up to you and almost stand on your rubber boots. So it was not hard to get close to the penguins. Headshot. So mixed in with these rock hoppers, there were these uh, imperial cormorants, and they were also nesting. And here's the, you can see the breeding plumage, that little yellow knob at the base of the beak. So the Falklands used to have whaling stations. There's no whaling anymore, but there were plenty of whale bones left behind from the whaling era. And when we were sailing, we would, from island to island, we would uh, see a lot of seabirds. So this is a, a typical bird that we would see a, a giant petrel. And you can see the tube nose here that's used to excrete salt um, that they, from the water they ingest. And um, this is, uh, uh, just a view of the landscape on New Island. You can see this is some of our group that are either coming down the hill or going up the hill uh, to the uh, uh, penguin uh, colony. So once we'd uh, done with the rock hoppers, we actually walked uh, five miles across this island to a different uh, wildlife site. Um, and on the trip, um, we saw these penguins. So these are Magellanic penguins that actually dig burrows. So this one is in front of the mouth of the burrow. Um, and when we got to the other side of the island, we found these um, albatross. So these are the black browed albatross sitting on their mud nests, some of them with babies. And the rockhoppers seem to like to nest with the albatross. So these very dignified, quiet birds would have these uh, bouncy, screamy neighbors, the rockhoppers, probably for protection is probably why they're there. Lots of chicks, always wanting to be fed. These were very pretty birds. So the next day, um, we uh, visited uh, Carcass Island. So Carcass Island uh, has this nice beach where there were, where the, which the penguins were using a lot. So there's two different kinds of penguins here, the Magellanic penguins and the Gentoo penguins here. And here's, uh, so this is a gentoo. So the gentoo is uh, bigger, they're a lot bigger than the um, rock hoppers and, and considerably bigger than the Magellanic. They can be up to 90 centimeters tall. There were other birds as well as penguins. So this is um, a pair of kelp geese. So you can see how well the female is camouflaged sitting down here in the kelp with the male looking after her. This is a pair of ruddy-headed geese with two goslings. 
and lots of penguins. So these, um, these are the Magellanic penguins and the adults are the ones with the distinct white markings. The uh, juveniles haven't quite got their stripes yet, so they're a little more indistinct markings. And you can see the uh, juvenile in the background, the adults in the foreground. And these are, these are odd looking steamer ducks. So these are flightless steamer ducks, which are um, very unusual species, but see them quite a bit in South America. And the Falklands. Uh, this is just a view from, uh, from the beach at Carcass Island. So the next day, um, we're going to steep, this is Steeple Jason. And this is most people's favorite spot in the Falklands that we visited. But we, the weather was quite um, windy on this day and it made it impossible for us to really land the Zodiacs at the preferred landing site. So we had to sort of spend some time sailing around looking for a good place to land. And, but we were keen to land because of um, this huge colony of um, black-browed albatross. So you can see these, this white patch here and up here and along the shore here. So this was uh, between one and 200,000 black-browed albatross nesting at this site. So we did eventually find a place to land, but it was not anybody's favorite landing. So here's the Zodiac coming and here are all the uh, guides sort of getting ready to help the uh, tourists scramble over these pointy rocks. But we all made it. And once you got ashore, it was uh, actually quite nice. It was, you know, these this tussock grass and moss and lichen, but uh, very nice walking. But, and we're trying to get to the albatross colony, so we have to walk past this colony of gentoo penguins. Here. And as we're walking, we would see these eggs, um, and some of them, there they were birds of prey on the um, island, so uh, they would uh, take the a penguin egg if they could get it for sure. So after struggling over the pointy rocks, we got to watch these gentoo penguins just dancing across them like there was no problem at all. Slipping into the freezing cold water, again, no problem. And on, on our walk to the albatross, we also saw these guys, these striated caracaras. They nest on the ground and they become very aggressive if you get anywhere close to their eggs. So some people had their hats stolen or knocked off their heads. I was lucky, it didn't bother me, but they are not timid birds. But here we are coming over the hill, um, looking down on the albatross colony. You can see all the, those little white birds down there. And here's one on the wing. You can see the long tapered wings, sort of typical of an albatross. And here he is coming in for a landing, precision landing on the nest. You can see they're sort of, they're packed in there sort of beak to beak. And once again, we have these uh, rock hoppers sort of sharing the space. And here's, here's a rock hopper chip, chick here. Um, but eggs, babies, lots of albatross. And very noisy neighbors. Lots of screaming. So we were done now with Fal the Falklands and we're going to spend two and a half days sailing to um, South Georgia. 
And as we're sailing along, we're, many of us are up on deck uh, looking for birds and whales. And we often saw, saw such animals, including this is a, another giant petrel. Note the tube nose again. So South Georgia. So these are the landing sites uh, on South Georgia. And we started, we were going to land in El Sahul and we couldn't land here because there were too many fur seals on the beach. So fur seals had been hunted almost to extinction, but they've made a very good recovery. And there were lots of them and pretty well everywhere we went on South Georgia. Uh, so instead of El Sahul, we landed at Right Whale Bay, and then we went to, um, um, for the next day, we went to Fortuna Bay and Stromness, and then um, uh, the following day, Hercules Bay and Gritviken, and then back to Salisbury Plain and Prion Island, and then um, Gautul, Dragalski Fjord and Cooper Bay. So that's six days on South Georgia. So this is um, approaching South Georgia and you can see how very mountainous it is. It's, I was actually a bit surprised at how mountainous it is, but uh, there you are. And as we got closer to the land, um, we started to see more and more life in the water. So here we've got the black-browed albatross again, and a new species, the gray-headed albatross. And there's our ship um, anchored at Right Whale Bay. So by the time we got there, it was getting into the evening, so you can see the evening light uh, in the sky. We are welcomed by an, another uh, giant petrel and lots of fur seals. So not as many as there were supposed to have been at El Sahil, but still plenty of fur seals on the beach. Interesting light in the sky. And lots of fur seals in the water too. So this is now uh, the next day we're uh, at Fortuna Bay more fur seals. So here's the big male here with uh, his harem. And there were lots of babies, little pups playing with each other. And if you climbed up the hill a bit, you could see other animals like this light mantled sooty al albatross nesting in the bush. So there were reindeer on uh, South Georgia. These are an introduced species. The whalers had brought them as a potential source of food. And when the whalers left, some of these reindeers were left behind and they've actually survived not too badly. There aren't huge numbers of them and they are quite small, but there's still reindeer easily seen on South Georgia. So this is, we're back on the beach at uh, Fortuna Bay and we're now seeing king penguins. So these are the second largest penguin. They're about a meter tall and a little bigger than the emperors, but still a good sized penguin. And this is the um, elephant seals as well as the fur seals. King penguins in the water. King penguins marching down the beach. So most, as you can see some of uh, our group up here near the foot of this glacier. And most of us did do this walk up uh, to the foot of the glacier to see the um, king penguin nesting colony. So here they are, these large uh, brown babies, um, uh, chicks, and uh, even though they're big. They can't go in the water because they don't have their adult feathers yet. So they're waiting for their parents to bring them food. 
And they do eventually turn into nice looking king penguins as shown by this guy molting, but they are not the most beautiful baby. There were, was a lot of uh, display because this is sort of mating season and breeding season for the penguins. And a lot of feeding and demanding to be fed. Face only a mother could really love, I think. But the adults are quite beautiful. There were other birds, so this is an Antarctic tern. And that same day in the afternoon, we visited Strom Ness. So Strom Ness is a um, former whaling um, uh, site, but it is now a um, ghost town. So the only uh, things that live there now are fur seals and king penguins. The buildings are derelict and all the boat bits are from the old uh, whaling vessels. And this uh, town is um, particularly interesting for people who know the story of Ernest Shackleton. And I would imagine most of you do know the story, but you don't have time to go into it now. But um, Shackleton's um, ill-fated Antarctic voyage when his ship was frozen and crushed in the ice uh, left uh, him and his men stranded. So he took a very small boat and four of his crew members and sailed 400 kilometers across the Southern Ocean to South Georgia. Unfortunately, landing on the wrong side of it to get to help. So he and one of his crew members hiked across the mountains to Strom Ness. And this is the last hurdle of this uh, epic adventure where this is Shackleton's waterfall. So they had to, they could see Strom Ness from the top of this waterfall, but they had to get down uh, the cliff that it was running over in order to get to the town. So, um, this is Shackleton's grave. Shackleton uh, did not die on that trip. He died a number of years later, but um, um, at his wife's request, he was buried in South Georgia. He was actually buried at uh, Great Viking, but we visited the grave and each of us was given a shot of whiskey. We drank half of it and poured the rest on his grave in tribute to him. Right, and there we are leaving Strom Ness. Get rid of this thing. So this is the next day again, we're at Hercules Bay. So at the base of those waterfalls, there is a small beach. And we're coming to this beach to see macaroni penguins. So these, these guys are a little bigger than the rock hoppers. They're usually about 70 centimeters tall. Um, we were hoping that they were going to be nesting and have chicks, but um, not yet. They weren't ready to do that quite yet. But we did see them walking through the snow, jumping over the rocks, swimming in the ocean, jumping off the cliff to get back on the rocks. And on the same beach, there were fur seals again with babies. Pups. Fur seals have a very, the females at least, have quite a nice face. And there's our ship um, anchored just off um, Hercules Bay. And you can see this little, this is one of the little zodiacs uh, coming to shore to pick us up and take us back to the ship. So now we're sailing, this is the same day in the afternoon, we're sailing to Gritviken. Um, and this is just some of the vistas on the way, there are lots of ice, um, including this big glacier. 
and here's the town. So Gritviken is actually inhabited. It, in the summertime, as, as when we were there, there's somewhere between one and 200 people living there. In the wintertime, in the Antarctic winter, it uh, drops down to a dozen or two people. Uh, there was a little museum that we visited. These are the old derelict whaling vessels. King penguins posing for their photos. Nice little church. These are the old tanks where they used to store whale oil. And uh, the staff at uh, Gritviken gave us a lecture and, and to, to thank them for that, um, the uh, ship's crew invited them on board and we had a special dinner and the uh, kitchen staff carved up some fruit in uh, very uh, elegant ways for us. So this is the Filipino kitchen staff uh, being very creative. So th the next day, um, it's Salisbury Plain. So we arrived at um, Salisbury Plain very early in the morning, about before five o'clock in the morning. And we were offered the opportunity to skip breakfast and go straight to the landing site. And when I looked out the porthole, I could see it was a beautiful, it was a beautiful day, perfectly calm, sunny. So I and many others decided, yes, who needs breakfast? Let's go. So this is um, this huge colony of a couple of hundred thousand uh, king penguins nesting. This is just another view of the same huge colony. Beak to beak, jammed really close together. And here we got to see the, um, the eggs on the feet. So like emperor penguins, the um, King penguins incubate the eggs on their feet and they have to, the parents uh, share this responsibility, but they have to move the egg from one parent to the other and it's a tricky business, uh, but they, they need to do that so they can go out to the ocean and uh, eat. Better view of the egg, precious thing. lots of display to each other now. So I was very happy that I had gone early to this landing site because by about 1030 in the morning, the weather took a nasty turn and um, we had um, um, gale force winds and uh, a blizzard of snow. Even the penguins were not very happy. So the ship's horn was blowing, get back to the ship, get back to the ship. So we all had to go to the beach and get on the Zodiacs and uh, go back as quickly as we could. So this is typical of South Georgia, very unpredictable weather. So um, because of this turn in the weather, we had to miss a couple of the landing sites we'd been hoping for. But we were able to go to land a couple more times. Uh, this is a landing at Gautul Bay with uh, the fur seals. This nasty skua who is, um, you know, he's a predatory bird. We saw this guy eat a penguin chick, not showing the photos. And behind him is the elephant seal. And we also, um, visited, uh, you can see how bad the weather is, the clouds are right down on the glacier. And, uh, but we did, we could still see the glacier and um, the ice in the water at Dragolski Fjord. More glacier. And as we were leaving Dragolski Fjord, we saw the snow petrels. So these are most, to me, a most beautiful bird. They they look 
terribly fragile, but they actually nest on the ice. So they're much tougher than they look, but a uh, very elegant, beautiful bird. And our last stop on um, South Georgia was at Cooper's Bay. Uh, and we, again, we went there to see the macaroni penguins and see if they were nesting and had chicks here. So we had to scramble up this hill uh, to find these birds. And there they are, and there's one. And there's two of them standing in the snow, but no nest and no chick. So we did see the penguins, but still no babies. And looking down from that hill, we could see our, our ship out there in Cooper's Bay. Still not great weather. So we had to leave South Georgia without seeing it, without doing every single landing we'd hoped for, but we still saw a lot. And I'd heard all about the terrible weather on South Georgia, so I was glad that we'd seen what we had. So now we're back at sea for a day and looking and standing on deck looking for uh, marine life. And this is the wandering albatross. So this is the largest of the albatross. Um, a very beautiful bird. And here you can see the huge wingspan, at least three meters of wing there. And these birds, uh, they can live a human lifespan, but they are very threatened by um, human activities such as longline fishing. So it's um, yeah, a bird that needs our help. And we were at sea, so we had a chance to visit the engine room. There's one of our Filip Filipino crew members. And now we're at the South Orkney. So this is um, Shingle Cove in the South Orkneys, um, there's our ship. We're out in the Zodiacs, bouncing around in this rather rough, uh, cold water. Um, we did uh, get to land and we were able, to, for the first time, to see Adelie penguins. So here's the Adelie penguin feeding regurgitated krill to its chick. And you can see the crest is up. So this means that this, usually when they're a bit excited, the, the crest goes up like that. And so they're about the same size as the, um, they're a bit smaller than the Gen 2 penguins. They're about uh, typical 70 centimeters. And here's the Zodiacs uh, in uh, bouncing around in Shingle Cove. But now we're getting close to Antarctica and there's more and more ice in the water. So this is a huge tabular iceberg, um, oh, several kilometers long, probably broken off of the Ross ice shelf. Icebergs of all sorts of different shapes and sizes, beautiful blue ice. Another big tabular iceberg with all the bergy bits around it. Cape petrel flying in front of the tabular iceberg better view of the Cape petrel. Much smaller than the other petrels that uh, shown pictures of. So the next morning we got um, awoken up early, the loudspeaker saying, there's an emperor penguin on the ice. So we were in Antarctica, we were in the wrong place and at the wrong time to see emperor penguins nesting. It's a big deal if you want to really do that. Uh, even bigger deal than what we were doing. But we did see the occasional emperor swimming, or in this case, standing on the ice. So this is a, a juvenile, doesn't quite have all its color yet, but still a big bird. He stood there long enough for us to get some pictures, and then he dived into the water. Let's go. So now uh, we're We've, we're approaching the Antarctic Peninsula and we're going to spend eight days doing this route. I'm going to start at Paulette Island, which is most people's favorite um, place on the entire trip. It's wonderful there. 
Devil's Island, then Brown Bluff, which is the first stop that's right on the Antarctic Peninsula, then across here to Deception Island and Bailey Head, then down to Sierra Cove, uh, also on the Antarctic mainland, Coverville Island, and then down here to uh, Port Lockroy, and the furthest south southerly point was Peterman Island down here, and Booth Island, Paradise Harbor, Nico Harbor, and then back uh, up north to Hannah Point on Livingston Island, and then back across the Drake Passage. Okay. So this is approaching Paulette Island. So this is a volcanic island. When we arrived, the weather didn't look that wonderful, but it gradually improved over the next couple of hours. Um, we're here to see penguins uh, and ice. So here's uh, some, you can see both the penguins in the distance. Um, and better view of the penguins on the hillside. Lots of ice around Paulette Island, which is good for these penguins. The Adelie penguins really like an ice platform for uh, hunting and fishing. So these ridges in the snow and ice have been made by uh, penguin feet. So they're going up to the colony and down to the ocean every day and they dig these trenches in the ice. Lots of Adelie penguins. So these two are displaying to each other and you can see the crest is up for the two of them. The, uh, they build their nests out of rocks and the perfect rock is in short supply. So there was a lot of rock stealing. You know, you turn your back for five minutes and your favorite rock is gone, so. <laughs> And they, um, they can, it was easy to see them jumping off the uh, ice into the, into the water. Or coming back from fishing. And one of the things I really wanted to see on this trip was uh, penguins against the blue ice. And this was the day. It was just perfect. So lots of penguins and lots of blue ice hopping across the ice, standing to, for their photo on the blue ice, leaping from the ice, surfing into, from the ice into the water. And once they're in the water, they're just like little torpedoes. They just, they're spend most of their lives there and you can tell this is where they're most comfortable. So these are sheath bills. So most of these big penguin colonies have these sheath bills, which are, uh, their job is to, uh, they eat um, penguin feces. So their job is to clean up the colony and they really are, they can never quite keep up with their task, but they do their best. And this is uh, the Imperial Cormorant, yeah. Lots of pretty ice. I thought this one looked like a big iguana. So sadly, we had to leave Paulette Island. It was a beautiful day. We spent the whole day there and it was wonderful. But we still had some sightseeing to do. It was still a, a nice evening, very calm. So we were able to get nice pictures of uh, ice, particularly with nice reflections. This is a tabular iceberg with its reflection. One that looks like it's gonna calve off a huge piece at the front end. More ice and more penguins. 
Adelie penguins on the ice, they really like the ice and they are very much threatened as the ice disappears from Antarctica. So this is the next day and we're approaching Devil Island. So this is uh, um, another penguin colony. There's our ship in the um, bay. More Adelies. Chicks. Lots of chicks. Nice view from the colony for the penguins. And after we visited the penguins, we uh, took a cruise um, along the cliff side um, near uh, Devil Island. It was, had some spectacular cliffs. And so this is now, we're now actually on the Antarctic mainland. This is Brown Bluff with uh, Gendu penguins and their chicks. You can see the little chick here. So Gendu penguins are very adaptable and they're doing just fine in spite of climate change, apparently. Uh, we decided that the Gentoo chicks were the cutest of the chicks that we saw. There were still some Adeli, so there we have penguin sex, followed by penguin eggs. And here's, um, this is a kelp gull, and you can see she's regurgitated some um, krill for her three chicks. And this is just a bit better picture of the three chicks. Beautiful blue ice. So now this is the next day. This is Bailey Head. So this was another day where the weather was not our friend. It was very windy again. And um, there was some question as to whether it'd be safe to land. But in the end, they decided they could get us to shore and they, they were able, it took all hands on deck to do it, but um, the guides managed to get us to shore with the zodiacs and uh, nobody got hurt which is good and you can see the penguins along the beach but you can also see them way way over the hills and gone you know, as far as the eye can see penguins so and here's the welcoming committee with the, our ship in the background and I just, I'd been here before and I decided on this occasion I was going to try and um, walk to the end of this colony, but I had to give up. I, I kept going over one hill and the next hill and there were still penguins. And so here, over this hill and gone. So, and each of these penguins has to walk down to the ocean and back every day to get food for their chicks and themselves. So these are chinstrap penguins. So these are about, uh, these are about the same size as the Adelie penguins. And their colony is quite dirty and they, so this is the big march to the beach to get washed off and get food. And here they're diving in the water to get rinsed off and start looking for fish. And I had quite a job to find two clean babies, but here they are with their, one of their parents. And the next day we were at Sierra Cove. So Sierra, and here just for scale, you can see this big iceberg and the Zodiac um, at its base. So more ice, more big ice. And this uh, ice arch actually collapsed while we were there. So it was a good thing we didn't try and sail under it. And some Antarctic terns standing on the ice. So this was our first really good look at a leopard seal. So these are penguin eaters. Um, and here he is cruising around looking for lunch. More ice, Sierra Cove. 
Next stop is Cooverville Island, more penguins, more ice. These are, so these are the Gentoos with the, right beside the glacier. Some territorial disputes. Cute babies again. And now we're at Port Lockroy. So Port Rock, Lockroy is a British research station. Uh, there aren't too many people working there now, but uh, they, um, they do try and keep at least part of it looking the way it did in the 1950s when it was more active. So this is their kitchen. And they have this whale skeleton on the beach, which I think part of it's a blue whale, but it's not entirely blue whale. They've used other bits and pieces to make it look more like a complete skeleton. Now we're going to sail through the Lemaire Channel. So this, uh, I was not able to get in the previous trip, but we were not able to get through this channel because it was iced over. So I was very happy that on this occasion, we actually were able to go through it. So there's these rocky mountains on a, and glaciers on either side as you're driving through this channel. Sailing. So this is one side with the ice and the uh, rocky cliffs and the other side. And then we get to Peterman Island, uh, which is as far south as we went on this trip. Uh, more gin to penguins, more chicks. And there's uh, one of the parents regurgitating food for the, one of the chicks. Family photo. Demanding more food. And the sheath bill doing his best to clean up after them. And looking down uh, from Brown Bluff at the, uh, from Peterman Island there for at the ship, the Polar Star. So now we're at um, Paradise Bay. So this is a beautiful spot. Um, uh, typically very calm water is all surrounded by mountains and glaciers. So lots of ice, lots of glaciers. There's the ship again against the ice. And we, um, there's no place to land here. So we um, did these Zodiac cruises and here you can see the Zodiac with each of them with 10 or 12 of uh, passengers and the uh, one of the leaders um, who drove the boat. And there were lots of whales in um, a Paradise Bay when we were there, the humpbacks in particular. So this is humpback, there's his tail. Sometimes the tails were very close. And there's the gentoo penguin doing some whale watching. And in Paradise Bay, we saw the Waddell seals. So this is um, not a penguin eater. So they would eat krill and small fish and crustaceans. Very pretty face in the Waddell seal. And these are the crab eater seals, also not penguin eaters. So they, again, eat krill and small fish. And there's me with some of my small camera gear. So Neko Harbor, um, I did, um, many of us did not go to shore at Neko Harbor. Um, some people wanted to climb this hill and slide back down again, uh, but um, I thought I could do without that. And uh, I'd been to Neko Harbor before. So. And here's the Chilean flag uh, on the side of the building there. So now we're going through uh, Gerlach Strait. Um, this is uh, a, not our ship, it's a, a different ship uh, approaching us as we go through the strait. And this was a very um, um, 
uh, good time that we had in Gerlach Strait because this is where we had the best viewing opportunity of um, humpback whales. So we came upon a group of a couple of dozen of humpbacks who were feeding um, and we saw every kind of feeding behavior there is, but um, uh, hard to take pictures of it. Anyway, there, this is obviously the big mouth and the big uh, throat uh, engorged with water that it, the whale will expel to collect the krill. This is another, um, a, a group of them all feeding together, probably five or six whales here. Um, hard to know exactly where the all the body parts are. Um, and we watched these whales for about two and a half hours. Sometimes they came close enough to the ship that you could actually, you know, see the whole whale. And now we're at our last stop um, before going to Ushuaia again. This is Hannah Point on Livingston Island uh, with the zodiacs and all the gear on the beach. And this is the point with the penguins uh, on it. On this um, site, there were um, chinstrap penguins, more territorial discussions, more chicks, more gentoo penguins admiring the view of cute babies. And so this is just a good picture of the brush tail on the um, gentoo. So the gentoo, the uh, Adelis, and the chinstrap penguins all belong to the same genus, the brush tail penguins. The gentoos are the biggest of the three, but they're all very closely related. And here was where we've We'd been away from any kind of vegetation for quite a while, and so here we could finally start to see lichen and some moss, and the grass. And most of us took a walk down the beach here to visit the elephant seals. So here's a so this was the wrong time of year for the large male elephant seals to come to land. So the these were females and juveniles in this group. Most of them just sleeping. The occasional one making, this is a young male sort of trying out his lungs, making a few grunts and snorts. But most of them are just uh, dozing. Big yawn. And now we're uh, going back across the Drake uh, Passage. Um, it actually wasn't all that rough. It was rougher than it had been, but uh, not as rough as the Drake's, Drake Strait can be. And there's all the big luggage getting ready to go off the ship. And that's it, that's the end. <laughs>